Hi there. My name is Aaron Lancherman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is Moselle. If you are able to run Windows natively or in some sort of virtual machine, go to moselle-synth.com right now, click on download, download it, and follow the instructions to install it. It's in alpha right now, but it's incredibly impressive for being in alpha, and it's especially impressive considering it's the work of one person, Frank Sheeran. You define your patches using text, but it's not really a full-fledged programming language like Super Collider. It's really closer to something like Reactor or Max MSP or PD. You specify which modules you want to use, and then you define parameters for those modules, including parameters that describe how they hook together. Graphical programming languages can be okay for simple things, but once you hit a certain level of complexity, things can turn to spaghetti very quickly and text-based languages become appealing. For instance, one of the demo patches is a highly detailed emulation of a Hammond tone wheel organ. There's 91 separate sine wave oscillators, and these are mixed together appropriately based on the keys you press and the position of the draw bars. This would be a nightmare to program in a graphical programming language. But I will note that this is just a text file. So a third party who is very good at GUI programming might be able to make a graphical editor for this if somebody wanted to do that. You could have it compile a set of blocks and lines connecting them to this text format. Anyway, here I'm looking at the demo patches and here's one called Tom Sawyer. Let's listen to it. That was fun. There's also a tab here that says DW8000 Inspired. This refers to the core DW8000 synthesizer. And I believe what Frank did is he wrote a program that would take the DW8000 patch data and spit out an approximation to the DW8000 patch in the format of Moselle. Of course, this won't be an exact translation, but the results are interesting. Here's one called Electronic Machinery. I should mention that there seems to be a glitch. To get these to run, I have to take this bypass equals false line here in the delay block and comment it out. Notice that saving is not enough to actually load it up and play it as a patch. You have to say load edit. This is Base Digital 1. That's all fun, but the main place you should go is the Tutorial tab. There is an incredible amount of incredibly well done tutorial patches here that are all extremely well documented. So this is going to keep me busy for a very long time, and I'm hoping it will keep you busy for a very long time. To a certain extent, these patches are basically a history of music synthesis. So let's take a look at this oscillator sign pulse width modulation demo. This is tutorial 0109. And you may be wondering what would it mean for a sine wave to have pulse width modulation. So in order to describe that, I do need to mention another glitch I ran into. General 1, 2, 3, etc. are supposed to be the continuous time controllers. So general 1 maps to the mod wheel. I found that that doesn't seem to work for me. I actually have to change this to say mod wheel. So let me load the patch there. All right, so let's take a look at what happens when I turn the mod wheel. Let's see, the mod wheel is also doing some vibrato. So let's actually change this to breadth controller, CTRL. That is continuous controller number two in the MIDI protocol. Okay, so let's load that. Hmm. 
Now I'm looking at demo patch 0112. So these oscillators have power-based wave shapers built into them, and you can specify the power here by the pitch bend and the duty cycle of the waveform by the mod wheel. Let's see, that triangle doesn't have pulse width modulation, so let me try that sine wave. So I'm going to change this to sine. So let's load that. I'm incredibly impressed by Mazel and think it has a lot of potential. I'm surprised it hasn't gotten more attention. So go type Mazel Synth into your YouTube search bar and check out some of the demos created by the author. And also, let's see, 42 subscribers? No, please go make that number bigger. Show your love for Mazel. Unfortunately, if you go to the forum link on the website, it looks like this has been completely taken over by spammers. It would probably be best to just nuke this from orbit and start over. But there is a Mozilla software synthesizer group on Facebook that was started by the author, and it seems to be in good shape. Remember, it is an alpha, so it has some rough edges, but it's definitely worth trying out. And I think that the more interest Frank sees in Mozilla, the more likely we'll get updates. So I personally would love a Mac version of it, and I would also love to be able to use it as a plugin. So hopefully I've convinced you to download Mozilla and try it out. So I did want to mention a few issues I ran into and how I worked around them. So I'm actually running this on an M1 Mac, running the ARM version of Windows in parallel. So some of the glitches that I'm hearing, I think it may be the result of that. I think it probably works better if you're running some sort of native Intel Windows, like maybe an older Macintosh and Boot Camp. Anyway, if you are running on a Mac in Parallels and you start it up, it looks a little scrunched. So what you can do is you can actually go up to where it says View, Change Retina Resolution to Scaled, and then when you restart it, it will look better. So I put it in that scaled mode, and now when I start Mazel, it fills up the full screen. Okay, so now I'll go up to where it says MIDI and select my... MPK2 MIDI controller by Akai. And I should note that it looks like you need to have your MIDI device plugged in before you start Mazel. Anyway, here's the basic patch. Now, this sounded fine when I played it out of my Mac speakers, but hooking it up to my RME Fireface interface, I got this. So B sounded okay, but the rest sounded very odd. I realized there may be a sample rate issue. My Fireface 800 is currently set to run at 48,000 Hertz. So it turns out there's a configuration file, interpreter.mozel, in the mozel slash config directory where these things are set. So let's check that out. Okay, here's something that looks like a sample rate. Let's change that to 48... 1000 hertz from 44.1 kilohertz. And I'm going to assume that we need to restart Mozilla. Okay, let's try that. Hmm, that didn't seem to work. Okay, so let's try changing the sample rate from 48K to 44.1K, which I'm going to pause the video to do because otherwise I think it will get confused because I discovered that Camtasia really does not like it when you change sample rates in the middle of recording. Anyway, I've changed this to 44.1. Okay, that more or less works. Three hours later. Okay, this is weird. I just rebooted my computer, and now I'm having that aliasing problem again. But I have it set to 44.1. So let me set it to 48 to match what I changed the file to and see what happens. Okay, I changed it to 48. 
Okay, now it's matching what I changed the file to, that configuration file. I changed the configuration file to 48K. The sample rate of my Fireface that it defaults to is 48K, and now that's all working. So I don't know. I guess the take-home message is if you hear weirdness that sounds like there's problems with mismatched sample rates, go and fiddle with it till it works. Okay, there you go.